New Year. Woo! The first 2019 edition of Let's Talk About It. Taylor Rooks here with Jeff. Now, as you see, um, we're kind of matching again. Yeah. We're related somewhere down the line. Like, no, at this point. He obviously stalks me. This is knows how Marvel... what I'm going to wear to work. Nah. Matches it. And then it comes. This is how Marvel movies begin. I swear, <laughs> like, we're going to. If I end up with powers, you know, you saw what happened and, in Queens, right? And we right? never really wear sweaters like no, this. No, no, no. I, I, every time I say there's no way, there's always a way. <laughs> it must be like, you saw what happened in Queens with that blue light. Oh, I better get some powers out of it or something. Us. It was right, a for right. Us. That's yeah. how our origin story begins. <laughs> well, in 2019, I already have so much to talk about. And today we're going to hit on LeBron calling himself the GOAT. We're going to hit on Antonio Brown and also Harden and all of the MVP talk. But let's start with King James himself. I'm sure that you all saw the conversation where he said that he felt like he became the greatest after defeating the Warriors. Tell us, do you think that LeBron James is the greatest player of all time and should he have approached the conversation the way that he did? But, Jeff, do you think that LeBron kind of coming out and saying, this is when I knew mm -hmm. I was the best, mm -hmm. is the way that he should have talked about it within that conversation? Yeah, why not? He was being honest. I think yeah. everybody's being disingenuous when they talk about go conversations and bigging yourself up and really mm -hmm. promoting yourself. Like, yeah. why? If you felt like that was it, hey, when I saw him come back, I don't think Jordan faced a team as good as that Warriors team ever in his career. So when I saw that happen, I said, hey, he has a, a tick on the uh, on the GOAT conversation. So you're here saying LeBron's the greatest. I'm saying he has a very valid argument. Okay. Well, I guess my whole issue with it is I have never really understood the advantage of being humble. Mm -hmm. I think that there's a difference between, you know, knowing who you are and being confident in that and then being overly rude and disrespectful. What LeBron did wasn't. And it's actually Muhammad Ali is the person who said, I have found humble people don't get very far because in a lot of ways, when you think that you're downing yourself, you're putting yourself at a disadvantage. Right. And saying, I think I'm the greatest, I don't think is something that isn't humble. It's just you saying what you feel about yourself. And the way that Michael Jordan discussed it, there was nothing wrong with what he said either. What he said was also great. But we as the people kind of have this idea that an athlete a great athlete should never recognize their greatness because we think that we should be the ones to tell them that they're great. Mm -hmm. When humans in general should know when they are good at something and there is no harm in that. Yeah, that's the broke mentality. Those are people who have <laughs> um, a lower sense of self and, they, and they're the ones that need other validation. If you don't think you're the greatest at what you do, then why are you doing it? Yeah. Why? Well, Jesse Johnson says that if he brings the Lakers to the finals, he will without a doubt be the greatest. I don't know about without a doubt. Yeah, there's but... still some doubts. There's still a little bit of doubts. You know, there's a few <laughs> chips. Like, if you talk about, um, like, the factors other than, like, points, rebounds, and all of that, LeBron still doesn't have as many rings as though I don't think rings is the end-all, be-all. But you, I wouldn't say without a doubt. There's still going to be some doubts. That's what makes the conversation so great. Yeah. For this generation, they will be waving the LeBron flag. And the generation before will be wa waving the Jordan flag. And they both can be right. Yeah, I, I completely agree with that. But I just, I do really think this is about, like, why aren't athletes allowed to say it? Because mm -hmm. what happened is LeBron said what he felt about being the greatest. So yeah. then obviously Reddit, the king of everything, dug <laughs> up a new, like the old Jordan clip of Jordan saying that he felt like talking about that was disrespectful to the people that have played before him. And the only reason it was dug up was to create a conversation about the contrast of the way they answer the question. Right. I don't necessarily understand what Jordan's answer about being the greatest has to do with LeBron's answer about being the greatest. Yeah, I think Does that make a, sense? Yeah, I think it's a lot of respectability politics yeah. where this is the right way to say it as opposed yeah. to how LeBron says it. And once again, it's people who have a lack of confidence who think it should be said a certain way. If I'm being truthful and I say I think I was the greatest in that moment, mm -hmm. then why not? You can even see the disparity. Um, next underscore level dot 10, LeBron has a great personality, but he's never uh, convert the game to this is what it's like, Jordan. Uh, Jordan didn't take on that tough competition, bruh. Big, big ex quo. I don't know about all that, but uh, um, don't give up on your dreams. LeBron ain't gonna get another ring, though. You can see, like, the crown Hernandez, Jordan is yeah. the best ever. But this even, is what makes the conversation great. But that's great. the thing, how education means a lot says, why can't they both be great? And that is the thing I don't understand why bringing up one person means you have to bring up the other. Because it's not fun. Is it, that's how we have conversations. Why can't we got to choose I, a side? But we need I, to see, argue. I don't necessarily <laughs> believe that to be true. Yeah. You know, I don't think that to say that, like,
to talk about the positives about LeBron means you have to talk about the things that he doesn't do as good as Jordan. Like, right. I just don't get... And they're really the only two people we do that with. And I'm just... I don't really understand the root of it. I, I was just about to say, Aces Rise, Kobe the real Mamba. The Kobe <laughs> fans would like to have a word with you. They're, they're going to tell you to hold their beer because they wave that Kobe flag proudly, uh, regardless of facts, regardless of anything else in their face. So yeah. they, they've been, they were fighting on the front lines of Kobe is better than LeBron for a while until it, it kind of was undeniable, but they'll still fight that way. I agree, but I think at this point, the conversation is about LeBron and Michael Jordan, but I did some confused as to why we always have it. But I was, so over the break, I was talking to some friends and the question we had was, is there anybody in any sport that people have a wide consensus is the greatest person at that sport. And the only one I could think of was Wayne Gretzky. I was just about to say that. <laughs> a lot of Twitter people said Wayne Gretzky. People said Ali. Mm. Boxing purists may, 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 but then may some have say something Sugar to say Ray. about that. Like, so it's, yeah. But there's a dispute about the greatest in everything, I would say, except for Gretzky and Michael Phelps. Michael Phelps is mm. the greatest swimmer. Wayne Gretzky right. is the greatest hockey player. But when you get to football players, when you get to basketball players, when you get to baseball players, it's like there is no wide consensus. I obviously think Serena Williams is the greatest tennis player ever. Mm -hmm. There's some people that disagree with that. Right. So I just... It's just weird that that's what we do, is we have to kind of compare and contrast all the time, because I think in some ways it makes us lose some of the appreciation of what we're seeing right now, because we're so focused on what we saw then. Right. And I don't know if that's always the right way to not even just like digest sports, but to digest life. Like, you know, I think it, it just makes everything kind of lose its luster. Um, but you say LeBron's the GOAT, so. <laughs> he says I say he has a valid case. I don't know. But, okay, the best point, though, is like, so Jason Green, who says it's a generational thing, and I agree with that. Mm -hmm. We equate our feelings about athletes based on the way they made us feel. Right. So I'm watching LeBron and like, wow, this person is great. I don't, I didn't necessarily have that emotion because I wasn't of a certain age watching right. Jordan. Right, and and you'll have some generations that'll say Wilt, some will say Kareem, some mm -hmm. will say, I hear a lot of like older, older fans talk about Oscar Robinson a lot. Yeah. Where they say, you see this now, we were seeing it back then, you know, but yeah. it was all in black and white and like <laughs> um, stop motion of photos and stuff like that. So I can't, I, I wasn't around then, but every yeah. generation is gonna have their best player and have their argument. Yes, I agree with that. Um, all right, let's move on to football, because, you know, there was some drama there with Antonio Brown and the Steelers. Yeah. Who knows what is going to happen with that? But before we dive into it, we're going to ask you, who is at fault in this saga? Is it Antonio Brown or is it the Steelers? Um, so for those that don't know, obviously, apparently, reports say that A.B. requested a trade from the Steelers. He no longer wants to be there. Mike Tomlin was an ass if he felt like AB has quit on the Steelers, and Tomlin's answer was, you can call it whatever you want. He didn't necessarily back up Antonio Brown. He, yeah. I want to say he threw him under the bus, but he definitely did not have his back. Um, and then obviously, social media is the birth of everything, and AB unfollowed the Steelers, followed the 49ers, then George Kittle tweeted AB, kind of insinuating coming to the 49ers, AB tweeted back, then Jamal Adams from the Jets then tweeted saying that AB should come to New York. So there is this courting happening of Antonio Brown when in all reality, we don't know if he could even really leave the Steelers, meaning mm -hmm. that if he left, they'd put on like $20 million of dead money. Right. Um, but what do you think? Is he gonna be a Steeler next year? I think if they want to keep their money right and, and not not have to deal with that that dead cap money, sure. But this is the same team that at one point got rid of Plaxico Burris pre um, shooting himself in the leg. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like they they've shown an ability to cut great players before. So I don't I don't know, but I just feel like if he feels like these antics and everything that he's doing is justified, then there must be something deeper there. You feel, what, when you say something deeper, you think it's something deeper with the front office, deeper with Tomlin, deeper with Ben Roethlisberger. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It's, I think it's the whole team. I think the Steelers are more dysfunctional than people actually think. Mm -hmm. I mean, this was a division where didn't like all of their co starting quarterbacks in the division go down or something like that? Like where they all the other teams had major injuries and they couldn't win that division with have, with the majority of their team with James Conner playing out of his mind. And as, at some point. Who do you put the blame on? Like, I hear Big Ben talking about everybody else, but you're the quarterback, dog. Yeah. Like, what's, what's going on? Yeah, because I remember once he kind of wanted to talk about A.B. and his route running, if I remember correctly. 
he kind of he he talked down on something that AB did in the game, and it was about that he needed to get better at his route running. And right. it's like, should your quarterback say that publicly? If your quarterback feels it, they should definitely say it. But should they say it to you? Should they say it in the locker room to the people? Um, speaking of the people, um, GD Up D says AB to the Browns confirmed. Oh my gosh. No, yeah, all right. No way. Uh. Savage Kid Trace says the Steelers need to appreciate Antonio Moore, and I agree with that. I do agree with that. But I also think that it has to be a two-way street. At the end of the day, the player is the product, and the player has to be happy because they're the first one's going to score a touchdown when games bring championships, bring money. Mm -hmm. That is true. But it also has to be a scenario where you want to elevate this player. I think what we see sometimes with a lot of great players is whatever happens, they put themselves in a position where people stop trying to make them better because right. of the interactions they have with them. Yeah. I have heard nothing but good things about Antonio Brown, so I don't know who's at fault in this scenario. Well, Chosen Chosen One Jones 102 says it all started with Le'Veon Bell. They yeah. don't have good leaders in the franchise positions. What do you think about that? You think they don't have good leaders in the well, franchise? The, the so reason, he's, he's shooting reason, at Big Ben. He he's definitely shooting at Big Ben. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. But I don't know. I kind of think that when he said franchise positions, he meant quarterback, wide receiver, and running back. Mm -hmm. But it's funny because like people are so quick to say, you know, they don't have good leaders. What do we know about Le'Veon that points that he's not a good leader? I think that that's something that we say because it seems right because he's not on the team. Mm -hmm. But we, that is not an opinion that lays within facts. Right. And it's, I, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, like. Yeah. Is he not a leader because he said that he wanted more money and right. not play for the team? Like, what is your reasoning for knowing? How do you know? What makes you think that Le'Veon is not a good leader? And why should he even be a leader just because he's at that position? I yeah. think people want to throw leadership on people that may or may not be that of that caliber. Like, mm -hmm. some people lead by example. Some people lead vocally. And some people just know how to play their position. Just yeah. if, if you're put in a certain position, you have to look towards other people. I was always told that it's the quarterback who runs the team. Yeah. So if if it's if there's any dysfunction, if there's anything going on, I'm looking at the head coach, I'm looking at the quarterback, and I'm looking at the front office. Yeah, yeah. And like whoever's if, designated as the team leader. Like, Mike Tomlin far and away is the coach. So with he is inherently meant to be the leader of the team. And what we know about Mike Tomlin is as a leader, he went into a press conference and he did not back up someone who was his player. We know that Mike Tomlin is a person who has multiple times talked about a player in a press conference, singled them out and said what he thought. Whether you think that was right or wrong, you can draw, I guess, ideas about his leadership because he has given us multiple examples of that. You can decide whether he's a good or bad leader. I don't think that we have enough anything mm -hmm. to say whether we think AB is a good leader or Le'Veon Bell is a good leader. Um, and I think talking about somebody being a good or bad teammate is different than someone being a good or bad leader. Does right. that make sense? Yeah, yeah. So. Gray Omar says AB84 is too old to be behaving like he is, too much of a drama queen, even more than Odell. Uh, Wally NGP, it's the Madden Covered Curse. And uh, Jason Orton Green, Big Ben had a career year. They have a good team. No reason they missed the postseason. Well, they missed the postseason because they didn't win as many games as the Ravens. But I agree with you there. Um, I, you know, and, and and I think it's it's also the stigma of the wide receiver. Like the wide receivers are usually they say they're, they're usually like the divas. They're one that's the, the most outspoken. It's but, so the diva position. Right. But at the same time, and I don't even it's say not that in like a bad way. right. But it, right, right, right. I mean. If, if you got it, flaunt it, right? Mm -hmm. But it's not like A.B. wasn't holding his weight. It's not like A.B. doesn't do... I feel like if you're doing work on the team like that, you have a right to speak out. You have yeah. a right to to put your mark on the team and, and be outspoken. So I, I don't know. Oh, don't and know. so Dog2000 says Steelers need to get that locker room in order. It's been a mess since James Harrison left. Mm -hmm. You know, it's funny because did you see how A.B. was like, I'm doing this interview, James Harrison. I'm like, this does not seem like a good idea. Like... Well, it's a great idea for us. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's, a great idea idea for it's a great us, idea for us. Yeah, yeah, I, I totally agree with that. Okay, so let's move on to some more NBA. James Harden is going for that back-to-back -back MVP, and he said that he is going to get it. Ooh, we got some spicy talk going on in the NBA as usual. So my question for you guys is, so far, does it seem like James Harden is the MVP? Should he win it again? What do you think, Jeff? I think he should be worrying about winning his first title than worrying about the MVPs. Who cares about the back-to-back -back MVP if your team is trash and they're not going to make the playoffs or they're not going to beat the Warriors or the Lakers or the Thunder? The way they've been looking, like, he's had to play at a god level 
to get them over 500. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the individual awards are cool and, and that's what he's going for. And, and it's funny, I'm saying that now, we were talking earlier about being humble and all of that and, and how you speak. I think he, he's, he's dead ass serious when yeah. he says that he wants to be a back-to-back -back MVP, but I'm looking at him and I'm saying, yeah, you should be playing like that but what what about the titles? Like, yeah. do you not care? Like, what's up? Now, this is just me playing devil's advocate mm -hmm. here, okay? Because I have seen that response a lot about what James Harden said. But if he was specifically asked about MVP, what are we expecting him to say? We're expecting him to tell the truth. So he exactly. did tell the truth. But I'm just saying, like, <laughs> that if that, okay, so you you know what, that's similar to like when you ask somebody a question and they give you the exact answer, but they're not giving you the additional information that you know that you yeah. would want. Yeah. I, I feel like, I, I don't know, I, I, I get your point where mm -hmm. if they asked him a specific question, he gave a specific answer, but it feels like that's his sole focus. Mm -hmm. Like when, you, I'm sure when you look at it and you get the full context, you get what he's talking about, but if you've been going at this for about, how long has he been with the Rockets? He's been with the Rockets like five, six, six years or, or, about that, yeah. right? And they got so close. To me, I'm like, I, I would be, that would be on my mind, but a title would be on my mind first. If so, he, uh, even if he cares about it like that. So you're saying, I'm like, all right, James, are you winning the MVP this year? Oh yeah, you know I'm doing and that so and you, we're winning the championship. So you we're getting both. both you're saying. Yeah, we're getting okay. both. I'm like, yeah, that's gonna be a given. If I do my job, we'll get both. Right. If I if I do my job, we're gonna get both. Right, just a little <laughs> bit more. Like, give me like six months and I <laughs> and I'll be straight. <laughs> but um, do you think he's going to win? I mean, there's so much time, but yeah. like, what is your feeling? Right, right now he's It's we're uh, like the halfway point. Is, yeah, right? we're about yeah, we're this is like there's been like forty four games or so played. Yeah. I think right now you're talking about him. I think you're still talking about Kawhi. Why I think Giannis is still a dark horse. So it, you call him Giannis. I hear Giannis. both. I just wonder. I, I'm what, from New York, so that's how I pronounce. I pronounce. I don't know Giannis. if I'm saying it right. It's Giannis, but okay. I'm from New York, so I'm gonna so say, say Giannis. You, I'm gonna say Giannis. Y'all gotta but say G with everything. It's, it's Giannis, but um, <laughs> I, I feel like right now you can make the case that he is in playing an MVP form, but yeah. that second half is gonna be a lot. So we'll see. Yeah, we shall see. I'm excited. Okay, wait. So who's winning it all? Who's winning it all? I mean, un until I see the Warriors really fall, it's, that's going to be my smart pick. But um, yeah. you know, I, I think I think they're one internal blow up away from from being um, sent out of here in the playoffs. Really? Okay, wait. This is interesting from C3 the boss, who says the criteria for MVP has to change. Dropping 50 points and finishing sixth or seventh should not claim you the MVP. Well, it depends on where your team came from before. I would yeah, say because it's about yeah. the most valuable player, not right. like the most valuable winningest. Right, player. right. And for them, that's why it's going to be so. But I difficult. do get the point. They were, I believe, they were the number one seed last year. So, so with everything that's happened, it, it's it's the narrative year by year. So now they were down. So now if he pulls them from where they are to get into that top two, mm -hmm. that's just as drastic of an improvement as it was from them getting that number one seed mm -hmm. um, last year. And even the year before when it was him and. Russ and you know the stat hive was in an uproar because Russ, because Russ won over Harden. Um, I, I I think you, you can still make the case. I've seen I've seen even with Russ they were they were in the bottom four and mm -hmm. he just had a phenomenal year and he got the MVP. So I think the criteria is fine. I think it's more so most valuable player versus best player is where people conflated a lot and I think yeah. that's more of the argument. Because I don't think we've ever just had a definition of what the MVP is. Like, is it the person who does the most with less? Is mm -hmm. it the person who, you know, was playing the best? Like, those sometimes are different answers. Right. And that's why we always have this, like, clashing idea of who should win. And I don't really know, like, what the MVP is to me may not be what the MVP is to you or you, right. you know what I'm saying? Probably different than a lot of you, so. Yeah, because even when they've asked before, like, what do you feel is the most valuable? Um, I remember, I think they were asking Braun this before, and it's like, if you take this player off the team, what happens to this team? Yeah. And you know, and that's the case, Braun can win every yeah. single year, <laughs> but I think it's who's having the best season in 2018, 2019, this season. Not what have you done before, what have you done for me lately? In no, this season, sure. who's had the most outstanding individual performance throughout the year? That's how I read it. Yeah, because yeah, so this person says MVP should be Giannis or Kawhi. This is Grayson Brown, I believe. Um, he said because the teams are winning. Yeah. My only slide to that is you can be an outstanding player and not have the support. Right. 
and you're still elevating your team and you are the most valuable person on that team and then you just aren't winning. Right. But I completely understand why people think MVP should be winners because they're saying if you are so valuable, you would be valuable enough to bring wins. Like, mm -hmm. I get both, but it's kind of like chicken or the egg, right? right? Like, you have to, we just have to decide. I feel like collectively, put your somebody foot down. put a definition of what the MVP is and right. then... Uh, yeah, let us know if you have your definition of MVP. What do you think is the ultimate criteria for most valuable yeah. player? Yeah, everybody mull that over. That's our resolution. Figuring right. Out, like, what's the and even is. secure the swag. He he agrees. He he, yeah. he can drop sixty, but that is not valuable for the team if they ain't winning. Yes. And that's what that's what it was like early on. Like when 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 Blaine Mello was in full effect and they were and they were hey, stinking Mello. it up. You know, like uh, that, it was like okay, what what happened? But once CP3 went down and they had all those injuries, you know, Harden turned Super Saiyan and started going nuts. You know, but um. I agree. Like, if you're dropping 60 per game and you're on a trash team, that doesn't make you the MVP. That doesn't make you the best player on a trash team. Exactly. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So <laughs> New award. <laughs> NBA awards. Best, yeah, player. best player on a trash team. <laughs> well, it was so fun matching with you today. I, I know, I know. At this point, I'm going to have to text you before you come in. Like, Sarah, please no, don't wear do this color. I do think we should start playing. Please don't wear this color. But it doesn't look as bad on there. Like, we have on sweaters. Oh, no, it looks the, wild different. The in person, it's not really. Yeah. yeah. In person, it looks the same. Yes. Well, Happy 2019. Happy 2019. First show of the year. Health, wealth, and success. Yes, and happy new year to you guys. And thank you so much for watching. <laughs>